Junior's is not the best Five Nights at Freddy's fan game. It's the best FNAF game I have ever played. Period. The fan game scene is full of talented developers, and while many releases approach the quality of Scott's official entries, Juniors exceeds those original games in nearly every way imaginable. It redefines the very notion of what a FNAF fan game is, and it's a monumental leap forward for the sit and survive genre as a whole. It breathes new life into the very idea of FNAF, and I can confidently say that it is by far my favorite fan game ever. It's really something special, and if I didn't know better, I'd believe you if you told me it was some sort of official product or spin-off. It's that good. In Juniors, we play as a paranormal investigator. He hunts like ghosts and stuff. Having heard the haunting rumors about Juniors, the infamous Freddy Fazbear spin-off restaurant from FNAF 6's Midnight Motorist minigame, we head over there hoping to get our big break by cracking the case. Sometime after arriving, our character loses consciousness and awakens in the Barrens, a limbo between life and death, surrounded by darkness. Our protagonist is confused. He doesn't appear to be injured, yet he feels empty. He doesn't feel alive. We don't have too much time to question our circumstances though. Immediately a paranormal presence makes itself known. Paul Bear, the spirit of a man hiding in a bear costume, has been trapped in the barrens for who knows how long. He informs us that no, we're not dead, and in fact, as a living person, he very much requires our assistance. It turns out that there is indeed a paranormal entity haunting juniors, and she is very, very mean, and angry, and spooky, and she kills people, and we need to stop her. Paul Bear instructs us to sleep in a nearby bed, returning us to the junior security office in the real world and initiating the game's first night. Unlike most FNAF-style games, Juniors doesn't require that you survive for a set amount of time. Instead, nights are task-based, similar to how FNAF 6 works. The night only ends when you've completed all of your objectives. When the night begins, the ghost will possess one of the six animatronics – Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Balloon Baby, or the Marionette. As the player, we're tasked with observing these horrific monstrosities, determining which one is haunted, and selecting that character on our computer. The haunting mechanics are my favorite thing about Juniors. There are a lot of different ways that this paranormal activity can manifest, and it really does keep you on your toes. The clues are pretty straightforward on night one. When looking at a room with the haunted animatronic in it, the lights will occasionally flicker off and on. Sometimes this is straightforward. You catch Foxy alone in a room, the lights start to flicker, and you know it's gotta be him. What makes this fun and interesting though is that multiple animatronics can be in the same room at the same time. If Foxy and Chica are both in the room when the lights start to flicker, we don't know which of the two is haunted. We need to wait for one of them to leave and track them through the cameras, observing them both and trying to figure out which one is triggering the paranormal activity. In later nights, ghostly handprints will appear on the camera lens when the target enters or leaves a room. Sometimes while looking at the haunted animatronic, you'll feel an unseen force tugging your camera in random directions, requiring that you struggle against it to see who's in the room. Sometimes the haunted animatronic prevents the camera they're on from being accessed entirely. The moment they move into a room, the camera cuts out, becoming available again only after they've left. This flips the gameplay on its head. Suddenly we're required to hunt down all the non-haunted animatronics, ruling them out and determining the haunted one by process of elimination. It's a cool idea that really keeps you on your toes. Heck, there's even a special event where a phone will start ringing when the target is in a specific room. There could even be more stuff like that that we haven't discovered yet. These mechanics alone provide so much more depth than the official FNAF games ever did, but Juniors takes things a step further with the inclusion of two unique animatronics. First is the marionette. While the main cast of Freddy, Bonnie, Foxy, and Chica are all freely visible on the cameras, the puppet is not. Instead, we need to trigger this audio button and listen for the music box, indicating their presence. They cannot be seen, they can only be heard. This can make things a lot trickier or easier depending on the circumstances. There were a lot of moments where I pulled up a camera, saw Foxy or whoever standing alone, and saw very obvious signs of the paranormal. I'd immediately go to pick Foxy as being haunted, only to be jump scared and killed. Sure enough, the marionette had also been in that room and they were the one who was haunted. In my haste, I had just forgotten to check for them. While initially, I believed that the marionette was the most difficult animatronic to deal with, it's not that straightforward. Some of the haunting mechanics actually become easier to deal with when the puppet is our target. For example, you can still hear them if they've disconnected the cameras in the room that they're in. Finally, there's Balloon Baby, the simplest animatronic to deal with. When he's haunted, the BB icon on the computers will start to glitch out. This is basically a free point, but it can screw you over if you forget to check the stability panel. You can find yourself staring at the monitors for a minute and a half, not seeing any signs of the paranormal, only to realize, oh crap, did I check whether or not it's BB? That said, as long as you get into the habit of checking for him at the start of each haunting, you shouldn't ever die to him. When you combine the many ways that 
the paranormal activity can manifest, the four standard animatronics, as well as the marionette and BB special mechanics, Juniors becomes incredibly deep. There's a lot of strategy that goes into it, and even once you've mastered the mechanics, there's still a lot of consideration and effort that goes into conquering a difficult night. The gameplay is too complex and variable for a singular strategy to ever be the most effective. Speaking of strategy, let's talk about how one loses a night of Juniors. Each of the six animatronics has a stability meter that starts at 100 and constantly ticks down. Furthermore, if you guess incorrectly while trying to determine who is haunted, the selected animatronic stability will drop dramatically. If any of the timers reach zero, you'll be jump scared and it's game over. At any moment during regular gameplay, you can call in an animatronic for repairs. After a brief waiting period, they arrive in the back room and you're tasked with heading over there and swapping out a disc or battery or something. This restores the animatronic stability back to 100, buying you more time to complete the night. Of course, if you accidentally call the haunted animatronic in for repairs, it's… yeah, it's not gonna end well for you. This adds even more strategy to juniors. While the goal of the game is to determine which animatronic is haunted, figuring out who isn't haunted allows you to confidently call them in for repairs when their stability gets low, buying you more time to find the correct target. After correctly identifying the haunted animatronic, the player is given a downtime period, which basically functions as a free repair on an animatronic of your choice. It's astounding how well these mechanics come together. The game gives you the tools you need to succeed. It teaches you its rules and sticks to them fairly, yet it still manages to provoke these fun, intense situations where you clutch out the night at the last second. There are moments where you've narrowed it down to two suspects, yet only have a few moments left before you're dead. Maybe you repaired one of those two animatronics recently, and their stability is high enough for you to get a free guess off. Maybe it isn't, and now victory comes down to a coin flip. Never before have I played a FNAF-style game that gave me so much agency on the outcome of the night. FNAF games are often really binary, you either did it well or you didn't. At most, there are maybe some RNG-based moments where you end up getting lucky and clutching out a victory at the last second. Juniors makes these circumstances way more interesting, to the point where even if you haven't figured out who's haunted, you can still sometimes use the knowledge you have acquired to make strategic guesses. It's a really natural extension of the FNAF resource management mechanics, and I'd love to see more games implement stuff like this. As the nights continue, so does the protagonist and Paul Bear's investigation. Between some of the nights, we discover VHS tapes, which the player can choose to watch or not. Contained within them are really adorable stop-motion style 3D animated sequences featuring the animatronics. These foreshadow the game's climax, and it's honestly refreshing to get some FNAF VHS style analog horror that's just pretty straightforward. Here we see Bonnie and Freddy looking over a diagram showing the animatronics combined together into a horrifying amalgamation. We see Chica being possessed in her sleep and walking somewhere in a trance, with the final scene showing some sort of horrific mechanical beast. It's clear that the ghost is planning something, and it's safe to assume that it probably involves combining all the animatronics into a horrific Ennard style thing. So are these FNAF VHS tapes scary? Not really. Is Junior scary? Yeah. Is it the scariest or most intense FNAF fan game out there? No, definitely not. In my first interview with Junior's lead programmer Ramanov, he explained that he didn't think the game would be that scary. This was pretty surprising at the time, but now that we've had a chance to play the final game, I understand exactly what he was talking about. Don't get me wrong, like I said before, the game is scary, it's a horror game, the character designs and the ambiance are really unsettling, and the jump scares are some of the best I've ever seen. However, the nature of Junior's gameplay means that you usually know when a jump scare might come. You can see the animatronic stability dropping down. You know when you're about to make a risky guess that could leave you dead. The jump scares don't really surprise you, which makes it harder for them to startle you. This isn't a bad thing though. It's clear that the team's priority was to make Juniors the best game it could be, even at the expense of some tension. Many fan games, and even Scott's official FNAF games themselves, seem to rely on big, over-the-top, crazy jump scares in order to draw our attention. And don't get me wrong, I love a big, spectacular jump scare, but they're never gonna stay scary for long. No game stays scary once you've played it for long enough. Juniors would be fun even without the jump scares, and them being somewhat predictable doesn't really diminish its quality as a game whatsoever. Furthermore, the animatronics design designs are so good and so creepy looking, the scares manage to hold up regardless. Just staring at the robots through the cameras is creepy, and entering the back room and seeing an animatronic standing there holding their head in their arms is very unsettling. The visuals are aided by the game's excellent sound design, which does a great job of both being spooky yet also getting you pumped and hyped to go kick some robot ass. Juniors may be the best looking FNAF style game ever made. The office alone is jaw-droppingly gorgeous, and it has its own unique style and aesthetic to it. I haven't seen an office design like it. The 
animatronics themselves have this rubbery, fleshy skin, razor sharp teeth, and elongated animal features. Derek's designs and models are just out of this world. I feel like I can smell these characters just by looking at them. The final VHS tape tells us all we need to know about the game's story. Beware the mangle. We reconnect with Paul Bear and have a heart to heart. These cutscenes are actually really artistic and well made, and they have a really distinct style to them that syncs up nicely with the Baron's dark, pulsating red color scheme. Paul Bear laments that it's been so long since he'd had someone to talk to, someone he considers a friend. Now is a good time to point out that Paul Bear's name is surely a reference to a Paul Bearer, or one who carries the casket. Paul Bear has been trapped in the Barrens, unable to leave, yet too afraid to fulfill the duty he knows he must. With all the other spirits trapped in limbo, Paul Bear is the only one capable of reaching the outside world and getting help to stop the ghost, to stop these killings and free the souls that she's trapped within the Barrens. The Paul Bearer for the Poltergeist. The protagonist and Paul Bear locate the ghost's fortress in the basement of Junior's. They decide to lure her in using themselves as bait, only to turn the tables on her when she least expects it. With this, the final boss battle begins. Unlike the rest of the game, the final fight functions more like a traditional FNAF night. The goal is to sit and survive until 6am. At the start, we're treated to what is essentially a complete remake of FNAF 2. Think about that, nearly all of FNAF 2's mechanics can fit into just the intro of Junior's boss fight. They could probably spin this segment off into a full game remake of FNAF 2 and it would be awesome. Gameplay wise, it's exactly the same as FNAF 2 and unfortunately, the game expects that the player knows what to do already. There are no instructions. Instructions. Thankfully, it's as simple as winding the music box, shining the flashlight on Foxy when he's in the hall, and putting on the mask when enemies are in the office. However, halfway through the night, the animatronics stop attacking. We hear some strange noises, pull out our laptop, and watch in horror as the animatronics pile onto a conveyor belt. They're all sent to a single location, and after a few moments, the game's climax begins. The mangle has engaged. This is crazy. This final boss section is easily the most intense classic style FNAF gameplay that I've ever experienced. The sounds are overwhelming, the visuals are breathtaking, and the mangle's design is easily the coolest FNAF Megazord thing that I've ever seen. We're tasked with locating the ghost on the cameras and using our flashlight to drive her away. If we take too long, she'll break the camera and our flashlight, leaving us helpless. In addition to this, the mangle is coming after us, and we need to use the flashlight on him in the center hallway before he can get at us. Finally, the mangle will occasionally send her tail through the vents and attack us with the owl attached to it. When you hear the sound cue, you need to quickly put the mask on until it leaves. These three mechanics aren't anything special, but together they produce some of the most frantic FNAF gameplay I've ever experienced. The ghost is the primary threat, she takes down the cameras quickly, and you need to get rid of her fast. However, at the same time, you constantly need to be listening for the owl arriving in your office, and you need to pull the camera down to use your light on the mangle as much as possible. This is what the classic FNAF style gameplay is all about. The tasks themselves aren't that complicated, but the visuals, the ambiance, the music, and the random nature of each animatronic's actions leaves you totally overwhelmed and frantic. It's an excellent conclusion to the game, and it really did get my heart pounding. It honestly reminds me of the final flowey fight in Undertale, sort of. It has that same kind of disturbing, glitched, pseudo-realistic look to it. The office becomes more and more corrupted and twisted, and the ghost becomes angrier and more powerful. They're desperately trying to get to Paul Bear, and they're going through us to do it, resulting in the crazy visual and auditory hallucinations that we experience during this phase. It's really cool. Unfortunately, learning the mechanics of Phase 2 takes time, and they're really unforgiving. Thus, you're probably going to die at least a couple of times, and every time you do, the game makes you replay the entire night again. The FNAF 2 section takes three and a half minutes, then the cutscene takes a minute, and then you finally get another chance at the final boss. It's way too punishing, and I started to get frustrated that it took almost five minutes just to have another try. God damn. If there was a checkpoint between the first and second halves of the final night, it would be absolutely fine, but as it stands, the second phase is just too difficult for anyone but an expert player, and it ends up getting really frustrating. Fortunately, the team is working on a balance patch for this final boss to address these issues, and it's probably already out by the time you're watching this. Anyway, after the fight, having been lured in, the ghost attacks Paul Bear and begins to torment him. However, our protagonist sneaks up behind and stabs her, freeing Paul Bear and the other lost souls, and trapping the malicious spirit in the Barrens for all eternity. Uh, now, I want you to forget anything you may have heard about the old locations, you know. Uh, some people still have a somewhat negative impression of the company, uh, that old restaurant was kind of left to rot for quite a while, but uh, I want to reassure you, Fadbury Entertainment is committed to family fun and above all, safety. They've spent a small fortune on these new animatronics. Anyway, Jeremy, when do you think you can start? 
I love this. Obviously, this is a reference to the high-tech toy animatronics featured in FNAF 2, as well as to Jeremy Fitzgerald, the night guard and protagonist of that game. More importantly though, Juniors pulls a fast one on us in the same way that FNAF 2 did, revealing that the game was actually a prequel to the events of that game. This whole Juniors case happened because they happened to build the place atop Paul Bear and the Ghost's graves, which in turn caused all the problems at Juniors, I think at least. It may even be suggesting that this is the supernatural event that led to all the subsequent FNAF games. It's a really interesting idea for a spin-off alternate take story, and I actually kind of prefer it to where the official lore has gone. Notice Juniors doesn't go into the mechanics of where the ghosts came from or how they're haunting the robots. It doesn't matter. It's a ghost story. By hand-waving these supernatural elements, the game is able to focus on being fun and scary, and it doesn't get bogged down with crazy in-depth explanations for how this is all happening. It's clear that making a fun, spooky game was the top priority here, and I believe Juniors is a much better game because of it. Most fan games emulate Scott's official ones, maybe with a few gimmicks thrown in here and there. I'm not criticizing that at all. These are small, non-profit projects made out of passion. It's unreasonable to hold them to the same standard as a full, paid product. The thing is, Juniors is also a small, non-profit project made out of passion and released for free. It's not even pseudo-official like the fanverse entries are, it's truly just a fan game made by like, teenagers. Somehow though, Juniors is just so impressive and polished and fun, I can't help but compare it to the official series. I can't help but feel like it has indeed changed my ideas about what a fan game could be, and even what a FNAF style sit and survive game could be. In a period where so many FNAF fan games and even the main series itself have become somewhat formulaic, Juniors shines as true Truly unique. It's a breath of fresh air, even to someone like me who often feels like they've seen it all in regards to FNAF. I suspect Juniors will have a tremendous influence on future FNAF fan games, and probably commercial games as well. Anyone interested in making a FNAF style game should probably take note of the things Juniors does so well and learn from them. This FNAF Among Us phasmophobia hybrid style of gameplay works really well, and I want to see more games explore these ideas. It seems so obvious in hindsight, I'm surprised it took so long for someone to combine these ideas into such a cohesive current game, but hey, Juniors finally did it. To the entire Juniors team, congratulations on this achievement. You should all be incredibly proud of the work you did, and you deserve all the praise and success that you've been getting in the wake of the game's release. Considering all the difficulties that went on throughout the game's development, I want to assure you all, it was definitely worth it. After my second Juniors video, the controversial developer Ramanov got in touch with me and kept me in the loop regarding the game's development. I also got to know him a little bit during this period, and shortly after I streamed the game, he said goodbye to me on the temporary Discord account he was using and went offline. True to his word, Ramanov has now left the community. The game will be maintained by the remaining team members. Ramanov, congratulations on your game's success. You should be really proud. I can't think of a better parting gift for the community, and while it's true that many will rightfully not be willing to forgive you, know that in time this scandal will fade from memory. Your name will fade from memory. Juniors will not though. It will always stand as a testament to the efforts that you and your team put in, and in that sense, it immortalizes you and all of those who contributed to it. I support your decision to leave, and based on the quality of Juniors, I'm sure you'll succeed at whatever you decide to do next. I never imagined that any fan game could look this good, and I never imagined that one could be such a legitimately fun game that's full of depth. It's one of the first FNAF style games that really has me itching to go back and play it more. I want to master it. Should you play Juniors? Of course you should, what are you waiting for? It's free, there's a link in the description. As I said from the start, in my opinion, it's not just the best fan game I've played yet, but it's legitimately better than any of the official FNAF entries. It's not that there are many individual ideas in Juniors that are especially unique or groundbreaking, it's the way it combines these mechanics so brilliantly. The resulting game feels really fresh and new and unique and fun and exciting. The art, the sound design, the mechanics, everything just comes together so perfectly, it surpasses many paid products. If you've ever had any interest in FNAF style games or fan games, you must play Juniors. Obviously everyone has their own tastes, but I personally cannot recommend the game enough. It's fantastic. Juniors is the best Five Nights at Freddy's game ever. Thanks for watching.